Welcome to the fourth module in the series on MB's earthquake prone building methodology. I'm Dave Brunsden and in this module we'll work through how TAs review and accept engineering assessments. This is the fourth of five modules covering the scope and application of the EPB methodology. The acceptance of engineering assessments sits right at the end of the assessment phase uh, and overlaps with the decide phase as and, and appears within section 3 of the methodology. So this module will cover the criteria for TAs accepting engineering assessments. It will explore the key question of um, whether an engineering assessment has met the requirements of the engineering assessment guidelines and uh, talk further about the role of the assessment summary table in providing the information for a TA to accept an engineering assessment and also touch upon the process of recognising previous assessments. So the criteria for accepting engineering assessments, uh, the methodology uh, states that engineering ass assessments must meet um, the requirements on engineering qualifications, on the form of assessment, on technical requirements, on and on reporting requirements. And these are all as covered in the previous module on engineering assessments. If all of these uh, requirements are met, the TA must accept the engineering assessment as stated in the um, section 3.2 of the methodology. This again is when we reflect on the linkage between the methodology and the engineering assessment guidelines and um, the regulatory point where the methodology requires those assessments to meet for an ISA, um, both parts A and part B, and for a DSA, parts A and C. So if we go back a step um, and, and examine that, that, uh, that key expectation of um, meeting the requirements, what does that term mean? Firstly, through an engineering lens, um, it requires that that consistent assessment framework provided by the guidelines must be followed in terms of the seismic demand, firstly, from um, NZS 1170 Part 5 as at um, the commencement date of the 1st of July 2017, and then the seismic capacities from the applicable sections of the guidelines, um, which um, derives firstly from an analysis method from section C2, or for example an IEP in, in part B for an ISA, and uh, the various material properties from the guidelines which uh, in turn is typically by comparison against current material standards but with appropriate concessions such as the use of probable strengths. And from that the percent MBS rating is determined as um, a, essentially a, ratio, a capacity uh, upon demand ratio and um, the, part of the reason for mentioning uh, this in this way is that there are certain forms of construction uh, that, um, for which there is not explicit guidance in the, um, in the guidelines for engineers to assess the capacity. Um, one example might be um, um, partially reinforced um, concrete masonry. Um, but whenever the situation arises, by working through the framework provided in the guidelines, uh, it they can always be used to determine uh, the, the uh, seismic rating. If we, um, however, look at the question through the lens of a, of a TA um, um, building control officer, the methodology really outlines the two um, points of reference. Firstly, has the engineer examined and fully understood the structure and the relevant parts? And have they applied the engineering assessment guidelines in a, in a clear, in a consistent and explainable way? And in essence, this um, this is conveyed 
by the engineer via the assessment summary table. And in the next few slides, I'll draw upon a sample assessment summary table for an IESA that is separ separately available um, with the slides from this module. So in this example um, uh, of a three-storey building, um, and the information is provided there, um, have a, uh, the basic information around it, um, the uh, assessment summary table goes on to, ex um, to explain how the ISA uh, was undertaken. The key feature here in it, um, is that um, additional information around the parameters used is provided in, in this part of the, uh, the table. Engineers have to realize that um, the, the TA personnel are not experts in the uh, various parameters and options and selections, particularly for an ISA. And so by conveying the range of parameters um, that are applicable in the situation, as well as just determining, um, stating the number that was used, you are providing more background to the, um, to the BC, BCO. And um, particularly where there are judgment factors, the F factor, um, it's important to convey uh, just where in the spectrum of possible um, parameters uh, the engineer has used uh, to come up with um, or to derive the overall rating from. And in the final element of the assessment summary table, the, um, there's a couple of important parts in there, linking back to something we covered in the previous module, that where an engineer is um, confident that uh, the ISA they are submitting provides all the relevant information to the TA, they need to make this the statement um, in accordance with um, section 2.5 Roman 4 of the EPB methodology that they are confident that the rating from the ISA reflects the expected performance of the building. And so we illustrate in this example how that statement can be brought through. If we switch now to look at um, the other type of assessment that can be uh, used for earthquake prone building purposes and that's a previous assessment. Firstly explaining what they are, we're talking about assessments um, that were carried out by an engineer before the new system came into effect prior to July 2017. It may have been commissioned usually by the building owner or it may have been undertaken um, um, by the, for the TA directly. It can be any variety of a, a assessment um, using an established method, such as an early IEP or a detailed engineering evaluation um, for the greater Christchurch area following the uh, Canterbury earthquakes, for example, an ISA or a DSA. This, and again, the, the methodology enables it to be used in lieu of a new, new assessment if it meets certain criteria in section 3.3. There's a, there's a balancing act here uh, um, and because there were um, so many engineering assessments undertaken prior to the commencement date of the new regime, um, there's not a desire to revisit um, them all, provided they, make, they meet certain of the quality marks of a, a new assessment. And so the way they, these can be brought through is they can, uh, if they're submitted directly to the TA, uh, they can, and, and they are considered to meet the core criteria of suitably qualified and skilled uh, engineering uh, engineer responsible, uh, having undertaken an appropriate exterior and interior inspections, makes reference to appropriate national standards or guidelines, and presents the outcome as a percent MBS rating. Or in some situations um, where 
uh, a previous assessment um, may not fully meet those marks. If they are independently peer reviewed by a CPENG, um, they uh, can be um, legitimised that way. Or they could have been part of a programme of assessments um, that have been subject to a moderation process. A number of uh, uh, national government agencies with property portfolios undertook uh, extensive seismic assessments after the Canterbury earthquakes and um, they are enabled to be brought through as previous assessments via the methodology. So in terms of applying the criteria, um, again um, the, the TA can either look at individual assessments or consider how a wider program of assessments have been undertaken. And Often there will be um, questions arising f from previous assessments where TAs will um, can re re request further substantiation or information from the owner. But it's important that they identify which criteria from the methodology in relation to previous assessments are not being met. Uh, they can't just say um, we don't accept the, the assessment. And if a previous assessment does not meet the criteria, the owner can opt to re either revise it or improve it, um, uh, uh, or to, uh, to begin again. But this is again is where the role of the engineer um, who acting on behalf of the owner must understand, uh, be, be au fait with and understand the criteria to know when a previous assessment, whether it's done by them or another engineer, is going to be suitable for submission as a previous assessment or when from the outset it's clear that further input is required. The fundamental requirement though um, is that a suitably qualified engineer is required to revisit any of the missing criteria. A couple of some key points to note. Um, there is um, no, well, if we, as we reflect on one of the changes uh, to the uh, Act provisions that came into force in 2017, um, uh, there's no reference in Section 3.3 .3 of the EPB methodology for the need for parts of buildings to be identified or scored. Similarly, um, uh, there's no requirement for an assessment summary report or table to be provided when a previous assessment is submitted. And reflecting again on the words that are in the methodology um, that, which say that the TA may accept a previous assessment if it meets the requirements of section 3.3 .3 of the methodology. That's compared to the wording in section 3.2 for new assessments where it says the TA must accept a, a new assessment if it meets the requirements. So let's just step through a couple of scenarios to illustrate the process of recognising previous assessments. So if we just look at the uh, common scenario of a TA profiles a building within one of the profile categories, as we covered in um, Module 2, the TA then writes to the owner requesting an engineering assessment. The owner knows that they have previously had an assessment and they um, bring it out of the files and look to submit it to the TA as a previous assessment rather than commissioning a new assessment. So the, the specific question from the methodology, does the assessment meet the requirements of 3.31 or 3.32 for acceptance by the TA or is supplementary evidence or further substantiation required? So in scenario three, let's have a look at a, uh, uh, a three-story early um, reinforced concrete building, a profile category 3 structure that had received uh, a detailed seismic assessment back in 2008. So if we just look through the, the various criteria, the engineering qualification, the level of assessment, the extent of internal inspection, the standard or guidelines used and whether the assessment outcome is expressed as a percent MBS rating, we see for this case um, it was undertaken by a chartered professional engineer, it was a DSA, um, there was a full internal inspection and the 2006 NZSE guidelines were used 
and the, the outcome was expressed as a as 40% of new building standard. Reflecting on that question, are the requirements met? Certainly the CPENG uh, met that mark. It was a, a recognised um, detailed seismic assessment. It was um, internal inspection. The guidelines of the day were used and the rating um, was uh, as a percent MBS rating. That would be generally regarded as an acceptable previous assessment. If we look at scenario two, which by contrast is an unstrengthened, unreinforced masonry building, profile category A, the owner had had, in this example, uh, a seismic assessment undertaken in 2005, preceding the 2006 uh, NZSE guidelines. So if we go through the situation there, it was because of 2005, the engineer was a chartered professional engineer. If it had been prior to 2002, then a registered engineer would have been uh, quite acceptable. It was a qualitative assessment um, in accordance with the 1995 draft NZSEE URM guidelines. This was a document which stayed as a draft um, from its publication through until the 2006 NZSEE guidelines in response to the 2004 Building Act were published. Because it was done at an early stage, it, it simply made the concluding statement that the building was not earthquake prone. It didn't give it a percent MBS rating. So applying uh, or returning to that qu the, the questions, uh, the, uh, the, the engineering qualification was uh, definitely met. Uh, a qualitative assessment um, was regarded for the time as being in accordance with the, uh, the guidance um, as uh, in force at the time, but the result wasn't um, provided as a uh, percent MBS rating. So therefore that 3.31 requirement for a percent MBS rating is not met. The TA in this case um, would be expected to uh, reply to the owner seeking further substantiation. And that then leaves it over to the owner to um, look at um, either uh, attempting to update the assessment or more likely than not would need to undertake a fresh assessment um, given the age of the, the earlier assessment even though it met most of the uh, minimum quality marks of section 3.3 of the methodology. So those case studies conclude the module on TA's accepting engineering assessments the next and final module covers TAs making des their decision on whether a building that is rating less than 34% is earthquake prone or not. Further guidance on uh, all parts of the system are available from building.gov.nz, uh, including uh, guidance sheets uh, and e-learning modules. Thank you.